Hi, welcome. This is the Chapter 9 review, um, Part 2, continuing the concepts of cellular respiration, but this time we're going to look at fermentation. And this is what happens when oxygen is not present. So if you remember from the Part 1 video review, we learned about the steps of aerobic respiration. Aerobic means oxygen is present, and we had glycolysis first, then we had pyruvate oxidation, the citric acid cycle, and then we had the respiratory chain. And this is where all lots and lots of the ATP were produced, right? And the ETC, lots of ATP. Okay. This is aerobic respiration because aerobic means oxygen is required, O2 is needed. But where do we use the O2? Do you remember? This was in the electron transport chain. So O2 is what we call the terminal electron acceptor in the electron transport chain. And so in order for all these steps to occur, one, two, three, and four, we need the electron transport chain working, and that means we need oxygen present. So what happens if oxygen's not present? Let's take a look. Right? So here's that electron transport chain, and here's oxygen. And remember, oxygen is a last electron acceptor, so as the electrons flow through the chain, they end up at oxygen, and it becomes water. The other thing important about the electron transport chain is that the electron carriers from the previous reactions show up here. They drop off their electrons and so NADH drops off electron and becomes NAD plus. Okay? And FADH2 drops off its electron and becomes FAD. So it regenerates these electron acceptors. They go back to glycolysis and Krebs cycle and get more electrons. So let's imagine what would happen then if we had no oxygen. Okay? So if you recall, when oxygen is present, we go through all these steps that we talked about. These electron acceptors, they grab electrons, so NADH has grabbed electrons from the intermediates of glycolysis, and it comes down to the electron transport chain. NADH from pyruvate oxidation shows up to the electron transport chain. NADH from citric acid cycle, electron transport chain, right? Even FADH2 from the electron transport chain shows up, I mean from Krebs cycle, shows up at the electron transport chain. When it drops them off, they go back to their um, corresponding step and grab more electrons. Right? So here's NAD+. Plus. It's ready to grab electrons and start this cycle over again. And the reason is all these processes can occur is because the electron transport chain is functioning, and it's functioning because oxygen is present. Now when oxygen is not present, so oxygen is not present, what happens? So no O2, it's not present. That means no electron transport chain because there's no oxygen. All right, there's no electron transport chain, the previous steps also stop. Okay, no Krebs cycle. So the NADH that's created during glycolysis, now you remember glycolysis occurs with or without oxygen. Okay, so glycolysis starts to occur, we create some NADH, we also create just a little bit of ATP. The NADH has nowhere to go. Where is it supposed to go? It can't go to the electron transport chain because it's not there. So we have no way of regenerating NAD+, so no NAD plus is created. Okay, and because we're not going through the Krebs cycle, no FAD plus is regenerated. So no NADH, eventually this is all, has all the electrons, okay, there's no NAD plus, so glycolysis would stop. Alright, so what we can say is the purpose of fermentation is to have a new place where this NADH can go and drop off its electrons. Okay, we're going to see it's going to go somewhere like pyruvate and it can drop off electrons there and become NAD plus again and allow glycolysis to keep going. So let's look at the definition of fermentation now. So for fermentation, we can say two things. The first thing is fermentation is a way that ATP can be produced when oxygen is not present by carrying out glycolysis first and then fermentation. So these two processes occur when oxygen is not present. We have glycolysis to create ATP, and then fermentation regenerates the NAD plus to allow glycolysis to continue. So step two here we can see is the a uh, really good definition for fermentation is it allows a regeneration of NAD+, and that allows glycolysis to continue. So for fermentation, the only place where ATP is created is during glycolysis. And what do you know about ATP production in glycolysis? It's very little, yes. So there's not much ATP produced during this process of the glycolysis and fermentation. 
There's two types of fermentation we learned about in class. Um, one is alcoholic fermentation, the other one's lactic acid fermentation. So this is the first one, alcohol fermentation. And what happens is there's no oxygen present, so we can't have, um, we don't have the citric acid cycle or electron transport chain because there's no O2 present, all right? So we do have glycolysis, all right? So we do have glycolysis continuing. So glucose we start with, okay? is broken down into two pyruvates, just like it happens in glycolysis. During that process, we create two ATPs, which is not very many, but it's some ATP. And as the intermediates, the redox reactions in glycolysis are carried out, electrons are lost. They don't disappear. They're grabbed by NAD+, and it becomes NADH. All right, so as this happens, we use up NAD+, and it all becomes NADH. Normally, this NADH would go off to the electron transport chain, right? but there's no electron transport chain, so it has to drop off its electrons somewhere else so we can regenerate NAD+. So this NADH, what it does is it comes down here, drops off its electrons at this molecule, acetaldehyde, okay, and there's an enzyme here, I'll call dehydrogenase, and when it drops off its electrons here, it becomes NAD+, again, and so it can come back up here and allow glycolysis to continue because there's another new electron acceptor ready to go, NAD+, it'll grab electrons and become NADH. And NADH comes down, drops it off at acetaldehyde, and that replenishes NAD plus for glycolysis. Now here's a byproduct, ethanol. Okay, this is not the end product that's uh, desired. What's desired really is this NAD plus. Okay, because NAD plus is used for glycolysis to continue. The reason you want glycolysis to continue is because this is the only place ATP is going to be made, and that's because the electron transport chain is off. There's no oxygen present. All right, so ethanol is made. Okay, that is the alcohol that's in beer and wine. Um, there's lots of microorganisms that can do this fermentation. Um, there's a yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, the, the big one that's used to make um, beer and wine. Now this alcohol, when you make beer and wine, is a, is a toxic byproduct. It'll eventually kill the yeast that are making that beer and wine. So the real product we want here is NAD+, so that we can regenerate um, electron acceptors for glycolysis and we create ATP there. A little side note, we also make some CO2, so that's why um, beer is carbonated, because there's CO2 that's produced in this process. The other type of fermentation is called lactic acid fermentation. All right? We have a similar process here. We have glycolysis followed by a fermentation step. Okay? There's no citric acid cycle, there's no electron transport, because there's no oxygen present. So we have glycolysis, we take glucose, break it down into two pyruvates. When we do that, we have some redox reactions, so we lose electrons. Again, they don't disappear, but the NAD plus grabs them, becomes NADH. Okay, this NADH would normally go to the electron transport chain, but it's not operating because there's no oxygen, so it needs to go somewhere else to drop off those electrons. So it comes down here and drops them off actually at pyruvate. So any pyruvate accepts the electrons, so it's reduced pyruvate is reduced to lactic acid. It, remember, reduction is gain of electrons, so pyruvate gains electrons, converted into lactic acid, and it, when NADH loses electrons, it becomes NAD+. Okay? That NAD+, can then come back up here to allow glycolysis to continue. Why do we want glycolysis to continue? So we can cre make, create, keep making some ATP, and we're making only two ATPs here. All right? That's not very many. If you remember, the electron transport chain makes 28, all right? 28 from the electron transport chain and only two from glycolysis and fermentation. So it's very clear that um, fermentation is not as efficient in energy production as aerobic respiration, but it allows cells to continue making at least some ATP uh, when oxygen becomes limited. Lactic acid fermentation is what happens in your muscles when you're working out and you're breathing a lot and you're not getting enough oxygen. They start making lactic acid because your cells are trying, they do lactic acid fermentation just to try to make a little bit of ATP to provide energy for work. Um, and then that lactic acid accumulates and it causes your muscles to burn and cramp up. And um, so you have to slow down and get some more oxygen. And that's fermentation, it's pretty straightforward.